Okay. Good morning, people. Here we are on a nice, beautiful, gorgeous Sunday morning. It's a, starting to get a little warm. I came out and did a ride to catch the cool air. Um, made a video or two that you all will never see. Um, too much demonetization caused by excessive profanity and not really sticking on topic because I didn't have a topic this video on the other hand we've got a topic people this is going to go into the why we ride series and you know I don't know it's something about my little weekend morning rides I like to discuss my why we ride topics I guess I could have gone out there but I don't really like the looks of that for some reason um and this is why we ride, and I believe this is episode five of the series. There's a little bit of confusion on the numbering with this one, but I think I got everything under control now. And in this episode of Why We Ride, I'm going to talk about why does Rocket ride? And I've, you know, I've addressed this in some other videos, some of my little random rap and rides. The rap and ride series is typically me just riding around talking about various topics that come from the you know the bike world and you know I may even talk a little bit about it in my beginner bike series again you know just a few random topics in the beginning bike series that I think people who are just getting started are interested in uh, I rode out here to Rockville Maryland I believe I'm on Veers Mill Road. Yeah, I am. And I'm not exactly sure which way Waze is going to send me home. But I'm um, going to be riding home. It's going to be about 20 minutes for the ride. I'll probably chop this up a little bit. And I'm not going to force you guys to do the whole journey with me. But I do want to share with you, you know, why I ride. And, and, and again, this exists out there in the, in the YouTube world in bits and pieces on some different videos but here we go number one i've always loved riding on two wheels i can remember at the age of five or six struggling to learn how to ride my bicycle you know get the balance thing down nobody really taught me how to ride a bike i i take that back let's say this at that time nobody was teaching me how to ride a bike i was just pushing a little you know riding a little bike with some training wheels Occasionally trying to balance it without the training wheels touching was able to do it a little bit and spent a lot of time walking my bike you guys know what I mean when you got your feet straddled off to the side and and mind you I'm talking about being six seven years old on a bicycle people I'm not talking about riding a motorcycle definitely pedal power and I wasn't the biggest six or seven year old so we're not even talking about a lot of pedal power so, you know, it took me a minute to learn how to ride a bike. I think I learned how to ride a bike at the age of eight, is what I'm guessing it was. And my Uncle Donald taught me how to ride a bicycle. I know he taught my cousin Greg. He might have taught Greg before me. I don't really remember. I think he might have taught Greg a little bit before me. He taught Greg how to ride. That's his son, my cousin. And um, of course, now that you know Greg know how to ride a bike, he needs somebody to ride the damn bike with. So he taught me how to ride too. I'm joking. That's not why he did it. I'm joking. So uh, we we had these little. We used to call them banana bikes. They were these little yellow bikes with these little banana seats. And they wasn't the coolest bikes in the world. But we were cool, so it didn't matter. You know, the age of eight. We had bicycles, we knew how to ride them, and we made good use of them. So we started exploring the neighborhood on our banana bikes. Well, you know, within a year or two, 18 months, I don't know exactly, we started upgrading our bikes. Greg got a three-speed. It was built on a frame similar to, you see, like on a 10-speed frame. So, it, But it was only a three-speed, but it, it had like that 10-speed frame. I got one of those little Huffy bikes, and I don't know if y'all remember the little black Huffies. 
they were heavy as hell but they looked like little motorcycles they had that little image of a little motorcycle think of it like a little honda rebel or a little harley 883 that's what the huffy looked like and it weighed about as much as a damn 80 883 so um we were out riding again continuing to explore the neighborhood and sorry to check my directions here start you know going back out exploring the neighborhood of course now the hills are a challenge for me because i'm still on this one speed huffy and greg is like speeding around on his three speed but you know bill's character bill's character that's my answer to every damn thing and we go out we're still riding exploring the neighborhood no complaints no complaints at all and i had to put my shade down and my shield up because it's hot at the moment and You know, at this point, I know how to ride, but we loved it. This is the point. We love to ride. So we're out riding about doing the thing on twos, me and my cuz, no protection, no helmets, no pads, riding the bikes around the neighborhood, out of the neighborhood, on the street, streets just like actually on this road, but not on this road. No, not this road, but roads like this. Um, riding our bikes, going where we needed to go to get to do what we needed to be doing, which was absolutely whatever we wanted to do. Uh, if that ain't a bike of life, then I don't know what is. So, that was our life. But like, oh, cameras, ways, why you didn't tell me all you did? You didn't say nothing, you just showed me. Um, that was our life. You know, we was doing the biker thing and we did it for damn near 20 years, at least 15. Let's say we did it for 15, 15 years. And mind you, I'm not talking about motorcycles. I understand people, but I'm of them mindset twos is twos. So, but the thing about the bike, and this is, you know, I talked about freedom in the last episode of Why We Ride, but this is really, you know, for a kid who can't get a, a driver's license. The bicycle really did represent a form of freedom. Once you got on that bike, once you got out on the road and you started going places, you were free. No parents standing around looking over your shoulder. No aunts, uncles, older siblings. Nobody know where you at. You out and about on your bike, traveling miles away from home. In the, uh, let's say, 80s. You know, it might have been a little bit in the 70s. Let's say 80s. And back in the early 80s, this is what we was doing. I don't know which way I'm supposed to go. This is new. I hadn't seen this before. Um, so that was the beginning, and I loved it. And I'm, and I mean, and I can, I can't express to you how much I actually just enjoyed the freedom of being out on my own bike. Now I used to have a picture of a Honda Elite 150 or 250, 150 scooter on my wall as a kid, and I probably put that picture up when I was about, I don't know. 12, 13, and it stayed up there on the wall for about four, five, maybe even longer, six or seven years. And now, mind you, I'm saying picture, I ain't talking about no pretty poster. This was a little Washington Post black and white news article photo at the largest. It was three by four. I can't even give it four by five or four by six. But I had the picture of the Honda lead on my wall. I probably found one in a magazine at some point and had with that up as well. So then I had a color one because I wanted a red Honda Elite scooter. And to again, again, to me, it represented freedom, the ability to jump on the bike and get away. I had lived in an apartment. I had nowhere to keep those damn scooter. But I wanted one. I wanted one so bad. Guess what I'm going to get? I'm going to get it in the next, I'm going to say, two years. I could literally go buy one right now, but again, I don't really have the best place to keep it at the moment. I am going to get me a Honda scooter. We'll talk about what kind of Honda scooter later. And then, in, you know, in college, University of Maryland College Park, Maryland Terrapins, when I was in, in college, I think I was still a government major at that time. I had not moved on to my history or economics majors. 
My cousin, same cousin, Greg, he had a Honda scooter. I remember it, Dwayne had one. Greg had a scooter, and he would let me ride his scooter, because that's what cousins do. And, you know, it didn't quench the thirst for wanting, you know, at that by that point, you know, I was still into the scooter thing. I really wasn't, you know, didn't really need it to be a motorcycle. So, I had planned on going to take the class over at the community college and getting my degree, not my degree, but my, my license, my certificate and my license. And I'd done the research and I knew it was there. Money, I had the money. I didn't have the time and the money at the right time to really just do it. You know, it was conflicting with my work schedules and stuff like that. And I just kept putting it off a little bit. So I didn't actually do it. Well, by like the age of 22 and 23, I became a dad, had kids, and then more jobs and more kids. And as I got older and supposedly more mature, I started thinking it was just irresponsible to go out riding on scooters and motorcycles when you have small children because of the dangers, the risk, the possibility of getting hurt. And I'm thinking somebody actually said that to me, somebody whose opinion I respected, and I just took it to heart. Well, as you know, Nicholas is my editor, is my son. Nicholas has just turned 14. Um, I didn't really get back to riding until Nicholas was 12. And it's actually something that we do together. Same deal, Sequoia. Sequoia hasn't been back on the bike in two years, but I took a class with her a year ago. So Sequoia knows how to ride. The older kids, they don't really seem as interested. Maybe we'll get them out into a dirt bike class or something just for the sake of it. But I basically put aside my passion for a period of easily, you know, at least 15, if not, 17, 18 years because I didn't want to go out, get killed, and leave my kids without a dad. And you hear that a lot. I mean, this is not an unusual story I'm telling. This is something you hear from a lot of people. And this is also the reason why a lot of beginning bikers are oftentimes in their 40s, you know, mid 40s, late 50s. And it's funny because you get this, let me speak on it, I don't really stress it much but there is this label and this stigma attached to it that um, people are you know in a midlife crisis it's not a midlife crisis I, I think that that's a that's a that's just something that people say to try and manipulate the, your actions and especially for something like biking which in America here this is more or less you know even no matter which how, how you shape it up it's usually a recreational activity even though I might commute on my bike run errands on my bike I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I'm not riding the bike for the fun of it because I love it because that's why I do it and you know that is a part of why rocket roll rolls rides that's why we ride it's enjoyable it's fun I've talked about this already I've talked about the addiction, I've talked about the freedom, I've talked about the biker community, all these things I've covered in previous episodes. So, but you know, this whole concept of it being a midlife crisis, to me that's crap. I mean, I think there's a certain level of, you, you know you and you're, when you're younger and your kids are younger and how responsible are you? How safe of a rider will you be? Is it really worth the risk? And not even necessarily the risk of injury, but is it worth the cost? Because no matter how we shape it up, owning a motorcycle does cost something. It costs money. And is it worth the money that you're going to expend on the motorcycle, you know, to be able to ride? That you could be using that money for something else like the kids, uh, clothes, camp, private school. You know, there's other things that I've spent money on my children for that you know if I had a motorcycle I might not have had as much money to spend and especially in those earlier years when the kids were younger because I didn't make nearly as much money I mean when 
um, when Dante, Dante's 26 now, when Dante was five, six years old, I was making one eighth of what I make right now. So we definitely didn't have money to be just blowing on a motorcycle or on the cost of gear and all that type of stuff in the, in the mid nineties. So for me, that was a big factor in terms of why I waited. I know the topic is why we ride but again i think you know i kind of transformed this into this midlife discussion and i don't really believe in midlife crisis i think that what you find is you find people and it's probably not just men women have have the same for they have a, a, a different but very similar scenario you have these people who have children at a younger age they don't really get to spend as much time out there as they might have might have wanted to spend when their kids were younger and they're trying to be responsible they're just trying to survive and eat and keep a roof over their head and finally they kind of get to the point where their children are older and or their income is higher a little bit of both I think for me it's a little bit of both and they now can afford to do some things that they couldn't afford to do when they were younger they now can take some time for themselves to do some things that they enjoy that they just didn't feel comfortable doing when the kids were younger and that's not a crisis it's not like oh no i gotta go and do this before i die mm, if i never rode a motorcycle i wouldn't have been depressed about it however i very strongly believe that if i want to go out and purchase a two-wheel vehicle and I don't know what am I paying about 160 a month uh, with insurance I'm somewhere under 200 a month on the bike itself I'm not gonna talk about buying gear that's a whole nother discussion um, there's a whole other, I'm going to do a whole other video on buying gear. But um, from the perspective of is it responsible to the rest of the family? We're going to do that later. But, you know, you go out, it's not about, oh, panicking in midlife crisis. It's not a crisis. It's a, okay, I done put my time in. I done did my duty. Um, I taught my kids how to walk. I taught, taught them how to pull their pants up. I taught them how to tie their shoes. Then go tie your shoes and pull your pants up and I'm gonna go do what I want to do I, I put I, you know I held off on that enjoyment of doing the types of things I want to do in order to make sure they were okay they're all okay right now you know so you no know, I hit I don't know what I was 46 46 I guess and I went and I took that very same class I wanted to take when I was 16 is that wrong no. I took, you know, the, the very same brand. I went out and bought the very same brand of vehicle as the one that I had up on my wall when I was a kid. Is that a crisis? Because I actually went out and finally did something that I've wanted to do since I was a child? No, not hardly. And so, again, I, I really don't necessarily agree with that thought process when I hear people saying things like that. One of the other things, and, I, and what's really interesting is other people's reaction. I think if nothing else, the one thing I found most interesting about me riding motorcycles over the last two years, and let's say two and a half years, because the topic really became up and got started getting serious about two and a half years ago. Over the last two and a half years, the thing I found most interesting was other people's reactions to it. They act like you're taking something from them. Like you actually owe them to do exactly what they want you to do. And that ties back to that whole freedom thing. You know, I, I personally love riding two wheel vehicles, bicycles, motorcycles, scooters. I don't know if I missed anything else. Never been on a moped, but um, I'm gonna try it out. I like it, it's fun. I like the feeling of the two wheels up under me, balancing the centrifugal force that's at play. 
I'm not all big on the whole throttle and acceleration. Mm, I don't really care that much for that. I'm more of a cruiser. But it amazes me how people act like you're doing something to them when you're doing something you want to do. And so I think I find quite interesting the reaction of other people when we ride. You know, there's a why we ride, but then there's a also what happens when we ride? When we ride, all of a sudden, you start to realize how selfish some other people around you can really be. And they will manipulate it and twist it to, you know, making it seem like you're being selfish for wanting to ride. I don't think now, in retrospect, it would have been a serious problem had I gone out and gotten a two-wheel vehicle you know back in the mid 90s when I originally wanted to it would have been a nice cheap source of transportation um, there are times in that time period when I was a custodial parent and you know Dante lived with me and there were times when I was a non custodial parent and I was only seeing him on the weekends or every other weekend I really didn't need a car not on a regular. Now we didn't have Uber and all of that back then, so you needed a car from time to time. But on a day-to-day -day basis, I didn't. The necessarily commute to work, especially the types of jobs I had, I didn't. Hell, I was on the bus a lot of those times, or you know, walking some considerable distances to get to work. Those times when I was walking and on the bus, I definitely could have been riding a scooter at that time, and the scooter probably wouldn't have cost much more than what I was spending on the on, on the bus. But, you know, like I said, um, I kind of allowed some ideas to get put in my head and I stuck with them and I chose not to, you know, go the scooter route. I regret that. That's a regret. So if there's anything that might be true about the midlife crisis is that there's some things out there that you regret and you want to, you know, address them. But again, I don't see that as a negative. I've had nothing but pure joy for the last two and a half years riding around on this motorcycle. And I plan on having nothing but pure joy um, for the next couple of decades riding on many different motorcycles, some of which I will own at the same time. And I'm going to have a whole space dedicated to motorcycles in the garage, even if it means having a second garage sitting out on the property. And I could very easily probably purchase a condo with one or two bedrooms and be perfectly satisfied with that but only because I do want to have multiple motorcycles and I want garage space and I want to be able to work on my bikes and keep my gear do I want to purchase something larger than that condo so that I have space for my motorcycles and I don't think that that's a bad thing I think that that's perfectly fine I'm not asking anybody else to pay for it. Now, I know me and Mrs. Rocket got to have some conversations. We, and we do on these topics and such. I'm not dismissing her thoughts, opinions, desires, needs. But I am just saying in general, especially when it comes to other people. Why the hell do you care if I ride? Why do you care? So it's not as much of a this is a why we ride but i think this this particular episode turned into a when we ride what happens when we ride and why we ride is it really a midlife crisis mm, nah it's not it's us actually taking some time for ourselves to do some things that we enjoy to do because we didn't take the time to do that in our previous two decades because we were too busy taking care of other priorities so it's not a midlife crisis it's you know it's a midlife there's a word I'm looking for and I can't really think of it so I'll just describe it it's not a compensation but it's a balance it's a midlife balance now can somebody go overboard uh yeah sure if I was you know rolling around on a, on a Panigale Tuano doing 170 on the highway, that would be a midlife crisis. Me putting around 471cc parallel twin 
cruise in the neighborhood in the morning or at night, whichever. That's not a crisis. It's no different than me going out for a morning walk. Literally no different. So that's my midlife crisis episode. I may do it again later. Maybe tighten it up a bit, script it or something. But this is the one that came from the heart. So even if I script it later and it shortens and it's not the 20 minute video that this one was and it turns into a six minute Vanessa Law type. This is this and this is that and this is what that is. And when you get that video, I'm still gonna refer you back to this one because this is the one that came from the heart. And this is the one where I really processed my thoughts on this topic. Anything you see after this is fabricated. This was real. I was keeping it real with you out here in these streets. But um, seriously though, this is Rocket Rolls over and out. Maybe we use a